This is the Q4 HubSpot Lansing, our HubSpot user group Lansing event. Uh, I have with us today Crystal King from HubSpot, and we're going to be diving into navigating the shifting social media landscape, which is a really exciting topic. And I'm actually going to hand it off to Crystal to introduce herself. So let's get into it. Great. Thank you so much, Anjali. Um, Okay, so some of you may know who I am if you've taken uh, any of the social media courses within HubSpot Academy. I have uh, the social media certification, and this summer we also launched the social media certification too. So that's a, a kind of an advanced course you can check out. If you want to follow me on all the various socials, I'm most active on threads and Instagram where my handle is um, the same. And on LinkedIn, um, although on LinkedIn, you, you, um, I don't usually accept random followers, but you can follow, you can follow me, but not connect. So just know that when you, when you, um, when you look for me on LinkedIn, and that's just because I teach so many people. I know people from around the, I mean, so many people are from around the world and it's, um, I find that LinkedIn is most useful when you actually can connect other people with each other. And so like, I like to have that specific connection. Um, I was previously at a bunch of other companies. I worked in B2B and B2C, including Pegasystems, Keurig. So if you've ever had a K-Cup coffee and you heard about it on social, I might've had something to do with that um, and CA Technologies and Sybase. I'm also a novelist and that's what I do on the side. I have um, two uh, books that came out in the past about um, culinary figures in Italian history, um, novels. Um, one of the first ones, Feast of Sorrow. The second one's The Chef's Secret. And I have a novel coming out next summer, or excuse me, next September. And that is um, titled In the Garden of Monsters. And it's a story, a retelling of Hades and Persephone, but it has Salvador Dali in it. And oh, so nice. It's a crazy, wild, fun book. So that's me. And I'm going to start. Um, so this in this talk today, I'm going to, the, the way that I'm structuring this is I'm going to go over a few social trends that I'm seeing today. And then I'm also going to dive deep into the platforms and let you know all of the changes that we're seeing in the moment, because they're really hard to keep track of right now because social media is just not the same as it used to be and it's changing rapidly and it's weird. And so I'm going to dive deep into that. And then I'm going to close up by giving you a some real solid um, ideas on how you can kind of um, what you need, what you can do to navigate these waters, basically. So, all right. The first trend that we're seeing is one that has been going for a while, but we will see this continuing, is that short form content is all the rage. You really need to be taking that iPhone and you need to be doing it more in vertical style and, and, and making uh, your videos in, in that kind of format, YouTube shorts, TikTok, Reels, those are really where it's at. Short videos are expected to attract 66% of consumers, especially due to declining attention spans and places like um, TikTok. Even HubSpot Academy, which we do a lot of long form content, we're starting to explore how do we get more micro learning into Academy. And so that may be some fun stuff you'll see in the future. We, of course, are seeing more AI. It's all AI all the time, right? So um, unless you're in China where they're gonna be massively rolling out armies of robots. I don't know if you saw that news. I saw that right before I came on here today. Like they are literally mass producing robots because they believe that's the next step. Wow. Humanoid robots. So um, I, I was afraid to open the article and read more. <laughs> Um, artificial intelligence is definitely going to be um, in every marketer's uh, playbook. It needs to be. If you don't know much about AI right now, you need to learn about it. Um, if you can learn about it and understand it, that means you can use it to your benefit. Um, we will be using it to generate text, images, video. You'll be using it to translate. Um, you can even do crazy things now where you can um, translate videos into other languages and change the lips of the person speaking. Like nutty things are coming down the pike. And so there's a lot of opportunity for marketers. And it also is super important in delivering all sorts of personalized experiences to users. Um, people want to feel like they are the, the most important thing, the most important um, person in the room, the most important um, 
person that you are talking to. So finding ways to use AI to create personalized experiences will be important. Um, and raw and authentic content still reigns. Um, you are going to see more and more just rough content, real, realistic. And this is an interesting contrast to the idea that we're starting to automate so much, but yet people want um, authentic feeling experiences. And so this is Charlie D um, D'Amelio, and she is one of the most important TikTokers. And um, this particular video, which is literally just her talking about her favorite flavors of Duncan iced coffee. And this is not an ad, it was not sponsored. She's just chatting away. You can see she doesn't have a lot of makeup on. She looks like she kind of maybe just woke up and it has 13.2 million views, right? Um, but this is a real rough video. And um, the videos that are really hitting it hard from various creators are the ones that aren't necessarily very polished. And brands are really encouraged right now to um, show more about the people behind the, the scenes and to do more impromptu stuff and um, connecting with people in a real personal way. Okay, um, we're gonna see a lot more social commerce. Um, more and more people are going to be buying their products specifically through social media. Um, we will see it um, changing from just basically you know, how do I get do customer service? You know, I, you go to, you go to, um, you used to go to X uh, or Twitter and you'd say, you know, um, hey, Delta, what the heck? You know, um, I'm really up upset about this. Now um, you're going to see more and more, um, uh, you're going to see more actual sales versus customer service. You're going to see people doing everything, end to end transactions through social media platforms. And you'll see more tools rolling out from the various platforms to enable that. Uh, social and voice search. Um, social is going to be the new search engine, which sounds really nuts, right? But we are going to be using our voices to search more and more and more. If you have ChatGPT4 right now and you have it in mobile, that means you can just pick up your phone, click the button for ChatGPT and um, say, hello, um, I'm looking for this. What should I do? Or, you know, I'm, I need to know this information and you can have it speak to you and respond to you in super fast real time. Um, that is super powerful. And so marketers need to start thinking about how do I adjust my content so it's found um, when people are searching by voice. And the way we talk is very different than the way we type. So that will be something that is, is interesting for us to explore and, and more and more um, SEO uh, practitioners are probably gonna be trying to figure this out in the coming months, um, but keywords will remain crucial. The keywords are still going to be one of the most um, central parts of that strategy. All right, so let's go into the platforms because I know that's probably where a lot of you are looking for information. Um, we're going to start out with the super fun one right now. And, oh, well, let's start with some general social news. Okay, let's go to the first one. All right. You've all probably seen this. Organic social referrals are in decline. And it's not just on Facebook. It's everywhere. It's 19.6% lower now than it was in the past 12 months. Um, we are seeing this all the time where you put, you put something in social and you get like just a handful of responses. Social media advertising, though, is the how you're going to counter that. And it's now the third most important source of brand discovery. So you need to pony up. You need to pay for ads. And um, we talked about social commerce. It's on the rise. It's a little slower in the U.S. If you're in other countries, what you will see is a lot of um, live shopping. A lot of live stream is huge, um, particularly in Asia. And you're going to see more of that in the U.S. Um, if, coming so that you have live sales that you know are, are this only for an hour or two at a time and more video shopping where people can look and see the video and purchase. Live shopping, Facebook Marketplace. If you are on Facebook, you might have probably searched or bought something from Facebook Marketplace. When I moved last year, I sold a huge bed in like two flat seconds by putting it up on Facebook Marketplace. People are shopping from each other, but you're seeing lots of small businesses and local businesses using Facebook Marketplace to sell as well. 
And now 91% of marketers are using video content. Even like a year to two years ago, you would not have seen a number that high. We probably, I don't know how much we've jumped, but basically everybody is sort of realizing you have to be on the video bandwagon at this time. All right, let's go to our favorite, not so favorite platform. Oh. All right, it's hard to do oh, yeah. my flipper while you're right. like answering questions, right? <laughs> One more. All right, so Twitter has rebranded to X, as we all know, but people still call it Twitter. Um, and there's still lots of things that have not changed. Um, if you go to stores that had um, the Twitter sign, like you follow us on Twitter, the, there's millions of like local physical signs that haven't changed. There's lots of digital properties that haven't changed. We still call it Twitter. There's lots of changes like the verification system, paying for premium service. You pay for your blue check mark now. If you don't pay for your check mark, you're likely not to have your content be seen by very many people at all. Um, they also removed article headlines from your um, from shared links, which is really devastating to journalists. And you're seeing lots and lots of journalists leave. So that means the news content isn't really there in the same way, and particularly reliable news content because they're all leaving the platform. So, for example, if you shared a post from um, your local newspaper on, um, on, on X, it would just be the picture, and you would have to you would have to say what what the link goes to. Whereas before, it would have a description of what what the link you're sharing is. So that means disinformation is really rampant on those articles. And so journalists don't want to stick around for it. Um, they also introduced the $1 annual subscription that's being tested in certain countries right now, but they are um, also moving forward as a, a, a larger revenue model to try to manage all of the bot problems that they're having. Also, they're bleeding money. I think I recently saw they're being they're valued at 19 billion now, whereas they were previously 44. Right. So um, they need to find a way to make money. Um, this chart here, you can see that this is um, Twitter mobile app performance. There was a huge boost at the very beginning. Um, or, and there was a huge boost when they first announced um, that they were branding to X. And then it went way down. And we're in the point now where things are just going down and advertisers are leaving and Twitter daily users are not, they might go there to look and see what's happening, but they're not posting as much. They're not, the engagement isn't there. 13% um, decline in daily active users. Um, hate speech and disinformation is keeping advertisers away. Um, there's been over a 50% drop um, in, uh, how, in advertisers. And a lot of these numbers are real um, subjective because it's not a private company anymore. So. Um, there's also a reduced load on news links. The, one of the things that happened recently is that um, they don't want you to, he doesn't want you to leave X. So they've made it so that it actually shouldn't say, so reduced load, it, the, the news links don't load as fast. Hmm. So people get bored and very quickly in seconds and will time out and they'll go to other content if the, what they're clicking on doesn't click through. So that's something that's happened. Oh, here, the annual subscription. So they've um, it's a new revenue model and the $16 month, dollar a month premium adless option. This is something that will be going into effect. As soon as that hits, I expect that we will see even a further drop. Also, Musk and uh, 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 Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg. Are their yeah. cage match. <laughs> so um, we all would have liked to have seen that. <laughs> What is happening is that we're seeing people migrating to a lot of places. Either they're not using channels like that were similar to Twitter, or they're going to places like Threads, Blue Sky, and Mastodon. And you can you can um, um, do all of this slide on this one. I can talk to it. So Meta is the largest one, and Meta had a meteoric um, rise at first. Um, when they announced that they were going to be doing it. And what was really cool and still is cool is that if you're on Instagram and you sign up for threads, immediately all of your Instagram followers follow you on threads. Some people don't want that though. They want to keep those things separate. So that's just heard quite a few people from joining. Also, they don't have a lot of features and functionality. And that's true of all of these platforms yet. They're 
it's just not the same. It's not exactly what Twitter has been for us for the last decade, and decade plus at this point. Um, so, but the thing is, is that um, Meta has the money and the willpower to figure out how to make it work. And so while there was a decrease, you may have seen some news that there was a huge decrease, not that long, there, it's starting to go back up because um, they're adding new features and functionality all the time. Um, once they start adding DMs and ads, which you know they will be adding ads at some point, um, you will see more businesses starting to use it. But I'm, I use Threads almost exclusively for this kind of a platform now. And I find it's a very positive audience. People are, are it's, it reminds me a lot of like the, the very old Twitter when people were just chatting about things that made them happy and there wasn't a lot of like downer news on it. So I, that's what I'm seeing at least. So I'm seeing a lot of brands starting to move towards it or putting their feet in the water. There's way more journalists that are there now. So I would say keep your eye on threads um, and definitely like start to play around with it. And I, and um, over, I would say over these other two platforms for now. So Mastodon, it's 10 million users um, and it has a decentralized platform. And it means that there's multiple disparate servers that run these instances and the instances can talk to each other but they may not always look alike. Um, they may be certain kinds of audiences in those instances. There's no ads. So it's, it has very little value for a lot of businesses um, unless the business is willing to directly engage with a very specific um, community. Blue Sky, however, is um, owned by Jack Dorsey and uh, it was something that was originally a Twitter project and was spun off. And um, right now there's um, 1.68 million users. They're still adding features very slowly. Um, it looks and feels very similar to Twitter at this point, um, but it's invite only and there's almost 2 million people on the wait list. So that one could pan out to be interesting, um, but right now it's, it's moving very slowly. So let's talk about Meta. So Meta is in a bit of a quandary. So right now, 41 states are suing Meta, claiming that Instagram and Facebook are addictive and that they harm kids and that that's emotional harm in a lot of ways. Um, and so it's addictive. It, um, it, they, they, they crave the attention that they get from interacting on Facebook and Instagram, particularly Instagram. Um, and Instagram, if you... I mean, you guys are familiar with Instagram, I'm assuming, and it's a place where people post lots of pretty, beautiful pictures and everything feels slightly unrealistic. Like it's not a lot of nitty gritty of the way the world works, right? It's our best moments that get posted there. And, um, and that's not always realistic as a teenager to see that. So these states are suing Meta and for so many states to be putting in it, put it going in this direction is, is really unprecedented. I don't know how this will shake out. I have no idea what this will mean for the social media world, because if this is true, it could mean all sorts of new sorts of restrictions on how social media is used in marketing to children. Um, but we'll see how this, this one shakes out. Threads Software is suing Meta for trademark infringement. This is a software company that's been around for over 14 years. They're in the UK. They have they're a multi-million dollar company. It's not like they're small. Um, Threads, Meta did ask Threads if they could buy the trademark and they said no, but they went ahead and used it anyway. So they're being sued for that. Um, Facebook, oh, and, and X is also being sued by Meta and a few other companies that have trademark X for social stuff. So we'll see how that one works too. Facebook and Instagram are going to be offering an adless subscription in the EU, um, the EEA in Switzerland. And so this is um, basically, so all of Europe, essentially. And uh, this is to counteract some of the privacy laws you know, that, are, that um, Meta has been um, basically violating. And so in our, and in order to get around this, they're, they're saying, we won't um, serve you ads, but you have to pay us. And so it's a real shady way. I'm sure this will be challenged, but um, they're looking at, um, um, at rolling that out in the very near future. Um, they will also, they are also adding more controls to manage across apps in their account center. You probably have seen this if you do any advertising through Meta, um, um, the Meta platform, 
but they've consolidated a lot of the way that you advertise in Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp to make it a lot easier for businesses. We can go to the next one. And um, they're also rolling out these AI powered bots. These are still in beta. I will be surprised um, to see if they will stay in the form that they are. Um, you may have heard about this. Basically, they have paid celebrities a ton of money to use their voice and their likeness to be chat bots for people. And so you can see probably a lot of famous pay, um, faces here. Brew, for example, is our good friend Tom Brady, who in the Boston area, we're very, <laughs> are very in love with this man, right? Um, he is a confident sports debater. Um, and then you have like, um, uh, so you can see uh, David Chang, he's like your, your cook uh, advisor. Snoop Dogg is your D&D &D dungeon master, but their names are not the names of the celebrities. And so people using it are really confused because like they want to talk to Paris Hilton, not to Amber, right? So they are um, really struggling with trying to figure out how to, to manage that. Um, the uh, the other challenge that they're also seeing is that, and that celebrities are starting to realize is going to be a problem, is that people, um, especially kids, um, like to figure out how to manipulate, make the, 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 the AI say things and do things that probably shouldn't be saying or doing. <laughs> so it's great if you can make, you know, um, uh, one of the Kardashians say all sorts of things that aren't really true, right? So, yeah. Um, definitely a deep fake. And uh, so they're also rolling out AI stickers and AI generative editing. So when you post things, um, you can um, create stickers out of all sorts of things. You can tell it to create um, a sticker that, and that can go on your posts. Um, and that sounds really fun, except for the fact that people like to make it do things that it shouldn't do. So you know, um, you will have lots of genitalia stickers that probably <laughs> wouldn't normally have been created. So they're trying to figure that out. Um, one thing that is really cool is that we're starting to, they, they have a partnership with Meta um, and Ray-Ban that um, allows these glasses and they look like just regular Ray-Bans. They're not as um, corny as the snap glasses that you may have remembered from the past, but they have cameras in them and it's meant for live streaming. So they're really kind of putting all in on the live streaming. It's not the kind of glasses where you'll see a lot of things on the on the on the on the um, lenses. It's more just so that you can stream um, from the from your glasses. So that's kind of cool. Let's talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is laying off people. They just laid off another 668 um, uh, people, um, and 770 went in May. There's still more to, that it will be coming. Um, it's 3% of their workforce. And they blame the slowdown in advertising. And this is something that um, a lot of businesses are struggling with, is the idea that um, the, the uh, particularly social platforms, they rely on advertising. Um, but advertising in general is an expenditure that tends to drop when economies are not great. And when um, businesses are feeling challenged, they cut back on marketing and they cut back on advertising. And so that's what we're seeing a lot there. Um, recruiters, um, this is interesting. This is just more like an FYI. Um, recruiters feel like if you have that open to work tag that LinkedIn offers, it makes you look desperate. So um, maybe don't do that. Uh, July algorithm change, um, it prioritizes detail and knowledge over virality. So they want, they're starting to sort their content into three categories. So a spam, low quality and high quality. And so high quality posts in their mind are the ones that are super easy to read. They use keywords. They don't have, they're not laden with hashtags and um, they spark engagement and discussion. And those are the kinds of posts that are gonna go up higher in the feed. So start thinking about that when you're posting on LinkedIn, how do you um, create more content that isn't that high quality? And TikTok, um, they are struggling to manage the influx of AI disinformation and deep fakes are huge on AI right now. There's been tons of them, particularly happening with, um, with celebrities and with um, political misinformation and things around the world that are happening. Um, so they're, they're really trying to figure out what do we do about this? Um, AI audio is the thing that they're most worried about. I remember seeing recently too that like the White House, for example, the thing that they're most concerned about is AI audio. 
because you can't map the face and the name, but it sounds so good. And there was a recent one with um, former President Obama saying something that he definitely didn't say, but that somebody had faked his voice. So you're starting to see a lot more of that, and that could be, result in all sorts of interesting and scary challenges for us. Um, TikTok's also reportedly testing an AI tool that will scan the videos that you are um, um, watching and they basically personalize it for each user and can figure out based on what you're watching and the videos you're posting, what products to sell to you. So that's way different than, you know, Facebook um, watching you everywhere you go. Instead, TikTok's just going to watch you here and then serve it up. Um, that, that probably gets around a lot of the privacy issues as a result of it. But um, you, because you've agreed to be on this platform and let them serve you up things. And so this is how they will do it. They are supporting direct posting from AI powered um, apps like Adobe Apps, CapCut, Twitch, and more. And some of those are their video editing. So you're allowing, uh, so a lot of, a lot more um, companies are starting to do API deals with TikTok so you can upload directly to the platform. And then they're going to be adding out of phone advertising options. So things like TikTok campaigns on billboards, you can create a campaign that's um, TikTok related but it's in, in the movie theater or it's screens and bars. And I'm not sure how that will interplay with it. I'm sure you'll start in one place and go back to TikTok, but they're starting to look at ways to do more um, in real life type of advertising that, that moves beyond TikTok. And then new ad formats, um, which we'll roll out next year, which include enhanced video shopping ads. And then I think that's it for that. Okay, so then we're gonna talk about some tips to help you figure out how do I, how do, what do I do with all this information? Um, so first one is, brace that short form content. You really need to be doing more short form. And your focus in this regard should be TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels. Um, and Instagram Reels can be shared to threads and it can be shared to, um, uh, to Facebook. Um, you can have those share automatically to Facebook as well. So that, that's an easy thing. Facebook and Instagram, you can create a lot of similar, co same content. Although I would recommend that you try to, to vary that a little bit. You don't really want both platforms to look identical. Definitely start leveraging AI tools. Um, Canva has just launched a whole ton of really cool AI tools that allow anybody to create things super quickly and, um, and there's so many really wonderful movie tools out there. There's lots of great editing. Um, AI um, is going to help you do all sorts of things, ranging from creating content to personalizing things for your users, um, also analyzing trends. You can even just ask ChatGPT all sorts of questions about your target audience to help you get information. Um, and then also it's gonna help you figure out better ways to engage with your customers. Um, you definitely want to stay updated on the platforms. This is a little tricky, um, but there are a couple of good places um, that you can do that with. Um, Social Media Examiner is one of the newsletters I, and sites that I often recommend. Um, you can always also follow the HubSpot blog. We try to stay real on top of anything that a marketer might, wants to, might want to use. So if you don't um, subscribe to those, um, definitely um, a good thing to do. Um, let's get to the next one. Okay. Engage authentically. This has always been true, but it's more true now than it ever really was before. Um, talking one-on-one -on -one with your customers is time consuming. It just is, but it is the best way to make an impact, a lasting impact. And so do it through comments, through live sessions, um, directly messaging people, rewarding people for engaging with you. Um, engagement, for example, on threads right now is the number one way that I see people building followers. When they're talking with people and they're posting regularly, um, that's how followers are built. Um, it's also how you build loyalty. So um, it's worth taking the time to do that and engage directly with your customers. Um, you also want to optimize for mobile viewing. Like I said, everything needs to be on a phone. Not everything, but most of your stuff needs to start being on a phone. It needs to be in a vertical format so that you can easily share that across your various platforms. People don't mind watching things vertically like they used to. Um, 
and this is what I was saying, you don't want all of your channels to look exactly alike. And so you do need to diversify your content. Don't be an all video platform. You want to mix it up with some text here and there. You want to maybe put some infographics together, offer up um, other types of content um, so that your feed is always dynamic and interesting. And then um, one of the ways which we really believe in it to, to reach your audience is to educate them. So educating them or entertaining them or finding ways to do both is, is really the way that these platforms are going to take hold of the knowledge that you're sharing. Um, they're less likely to be interested in a sales pitch. They're going to be more interested in gaining value from things that they're learning or the things that they find funny and want to share with other people. And then the big thing is, is monitor those analytics. Monitor them to track engagement and then adjust accordingly. And you, this is another area where you can take advantage of AI. Um, watch those reports, um, feed your reports into an AI system to have it analyzed for weaknesses or, or opportunities. There's lots of new platform um, platforms that are popping up that specifically help you do this. And a lot of the platforms you've probably been using are, are looking, I'm imagining, to start baking more of this AI into, um, into their software. Um, HubSpot, for example, allows you to um, use AI to ask it all sorts of questions it's about you can ask you can ask the AI tons of questions about your your audience in social and in your customer base. You can um, just ask it all sorts of great information for for all sorts of great information to help you build your plans and to reach those audiences better. So take advantage of AI. I think that's it. Oh, I know I went really right ahead fast. Wow, I only did that in a half hour. Wow. Um, breezed right through. Uh, so we have it open to Q&A now. Any questions you might have, if you want to put it in chat, we will take the time to answer it. So while people are thinking of what question they have, I have a question, Crystal, sure. because you're coming to us from HubSpot. I'm curious what emerging technologies and connections we can expect as we look to the future, because like right now, they're, we're not able to post from social media and HubSpot to TikTok, for example. And TikTok seems to really be prevalent in social strategies. Is that something that we can maybe expect in the future? I know that we are having conversations with TikTok. I don't know what those specifically are. I imagine they will probably start with ads, if that's the case. Because those are the things the platforms care about. The platforms mm -hmm. care about making you do more with advertising. Um, and so, um, that we're all, TikTok's definitely on our radar. Um, I don't have a lot of information about what that will look like, particularly in the coming year, but, but I do know that, that there are conversations. Um, they, TikTok has not been very forthcoming about opening their API up to a lot of people yet, but I think they're starting to realize, okay, this is, these are opportunities for us to gain advertising. So, yeah. Um, we, you will start to, one of the things that we had just announced today is that finally, this is the long time coming, you can finally start tagging people in LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook, You can, which you weren't able to do on our social tools. You can do that now, so that's good. Um, but they've been adding a whole bunch of new functionality. And I know that YouTube is also something that they will be doing a lot more with. Oh, so great. you potentially um, do more than just look at your analytics and, and deal with ads. So, um, so yes, they're, they're actively looking at ways that you can do more in that regard. Thank you. Uh, now we'll get into other people's questions. We've got one from Lisa. She is asking what length constitutes a short form piece of content? You know, this is funny. We were just debating this at, in our own um, group not that long ago, because um, it's, but I would say short would be 90 seconds or less because those are, that's the limit for Instagram reels. Oh, okay. You can do a little bit longer, like up to two minutes on LinkedIn, for example. I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head how much YouTube shorts is or TikTok, but I think Instagram's is the shortest. So like 90 seconds, which is not a lot, but you can do multiple videos on a same topic. So there's nothing stopping you from doing longer content. You just do it in, in a shorter form and in a shorter format. 
is there such a thing as too short form, short form content? Like it depends on if you're imparting value. I mean, if you have a 10 second video, but you're, you're, you're giving the, the, the viewer something either, either it's funny or it's important or, mm -hmm. or, or fascinating. Like, you know, it's, it, it depends on the content. All right. Excellent. Uh, Barbara is saying her focus is in sales development and she is doing consulting, but looking to learn more about social media. She wants you to connect. It looks like, uh, don't know that that's a question. What types of questions can you, or would you recommend asking the AI and HubSpot about social media? Um, if you're using um, social media in HubSpot, you can ask it um, to uh, analyze your social media audience. You can ask it what posts that you've posted over the last year um, are resonating the best. Um, you can ask it to, and it, actually you, the AI, there's AI built into, um, I think if it's not there yet, it's there soon. It's, it, it's, being, it's built into the email and blogs already where it will help you create content. I think it's in social, it's in social. Um, where you, it will help you help you develop your mm -hmm. content in, in the app. So you can tell it what you want it to say and it will help you develop the content. So um, that makes it really nice and really easy. So, um, but you can go into um, ChatSpot and ask it all sorts of questions about your analytics. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there, there's a lot that you could do. Uh, my team has enjoyed the the generative AI where like I had to write a post about myself and I hate writing about myself. So I just put the prompt in and it generated a very lengthy social post, but I was able to kind of trim that down. And we found that really great, especially for that on the fly, like we need it right now. Yeah, ChatSpot is so cool. It's built off of Ch um, ChatGPT, but um, it's it's tailored more for marketers. Mm -hmm. And um, and and it connects in with your HubSpot account, so you have access to things um, that are specific to you. So that's helpful. But the generative stuff is fantastic. Like we we are uh, HubSpot's all in on AI, so we're using it all the time for developing content. Um, I'm using it heavily in developing a, um, academy content. Um, it's it's an incredible helpful tool. Uh, yes, that it is indeed. In fact, our last hug was about AI and HubSpot. Oh, perfect. So you probably you may even know more than me. <laughs> uh, so do we have any other questions? I'm going to give everyone just a second before I move on. Any burning questions for our expert from HubSpot? <laughs> All right, well, we'll move it along. If you do think of anything, please always feel free to reach out. Our contact information is on this deck, which will be provided out as part of the recap. Uh, as far as that, that's the presentation. We always like to know how we did. HubSpot will automatically actually email you an MPS survey. Please take the time to fill it out because if there's topics that you wanna know about or things that you think we could improve or even if you think we did a great job, either way, we want HubSpot to get that information and feedback. And uh, again, how to get in touch with us is on this slide as well. Thank you for joining us. Our next hug is going to be in March of 2024. We actually don't have details yet for next year. The whole program doesn't really get kicked off until January, which is why the next hug is in March. The topic will be determined at some future date. Uh, you are all going to be getting notifications because you've joined us for this hug. And uh, if you want to know in advance what's coming up, you can always visit events.hubspot.com backslash Lansing and all our details are there. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, Crystal, for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. We really appreciate having you. And Thanks thank for you having me. For attending. Yeah. Quitting.